Are you ready for a winning night of comedy? You're all really good liars. No, just kidding. No, I could tell. I love the laughter. And you can see, I bring my trophy with me wherever I go. It's, it's not really the Stanley Cup, but in my eyes it is. So I've discovered that I can, I can live my life the way I want to. So who has done something in their life that maybe didn't really fit with their true self? So those are the people who have lived, I mean, have worked or are working in the corporate world, right? <laughs> yeah. So I find that corporate life is not real life. Does anybody identify with me when I say that? Oh, yeah. It does, yeah, the raise, show of hands and all that jazz. Yeah, someone's got her hand up so high she can touch the ceiling. She's only as tall as I am, and that's great. So what I found that when I worked in the corporate world and it didn't work for me, I tried to make it work. You know, the old square peg and a round hole? Well, I was like an octagonal peg with, with spikes and everything, trying to jam myself into that hole. It didn't work. It didn't work. But I still tried to find the funny wherever I worked. So even if it meant laughing at people's miscommunication or laughing at how my boss would call me on speakerphone from being, oh, let's see, this far away. So, and I could hear my voice through the speakerphone. So I do think we've lost that face-to-face that -face contact. Um, so I would offer out an opportunity to have the face-to-face -face communication. She didn't want it. So I hear, yeah, in, in, in stereo, Julie, 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 Julie. Can you come in my office, 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 office? And I hear myself say, do you want me to close the door, 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 door? <laughs> no, that's fine, 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 fine. But she and I didn't get along that well. And that's OK. It's, it's all right. And so that's why I do my own thing. But what I did find also in the corporate world, there's a, a unique way of communicating also. There's the cube life. You know, there's, there's a certain way to communicate and just with the email. And the messages can be mis miscommunicated, right? So if everyone knows not to talk in all caps, like, that was a great meeting. <laughs> You're doing great work. You know, there's some managers I've had who didn't really have the finesse of the communication style. I've also worked with, with kids, love kids. You know, when they're quiet, right? <laughs> yeah, applause, yeah. Newly adopted parents, of course, they're going to applaud. Lovely parents, <laughs> lovely parents. <laughs> so, but what I had found is that if we're not careful, we will raise horrible managers. <laughs> so I worked at a kid's camp, and they're all whining. Like, hey, what are we going to have for a snack? What are we going swimming? So I thought, what if we really talked like that? Because really, we do act like kids sometimes, right? Like, I don't want to go to work. I don't want to work 12 hours when my manager doesn't do anything. You know, I don't want to go to work when I'm the one who's bringing in the money and she's doing shit, right? <laughs> Resonate with anybody? But really, I mean, there, we're all kids, and so I just imagine what it would be like in a conference room saying what you really want to say. Like, <laughs> no, that's awful. You stink. That's awful. That's horrible. But actually, then those people are actually the ones who become the managers, right? Oopsies. Did I say that out loud? No former employers are right are here, yep. <laughs> we left am amicably, that's fine. So everyone is happy with their, their lives? Wow. <laughs> Roger, we need to have more comedy nights. <laughs> Ooh. But I did mention in one of the scenes that like, I didn't hear one of the suggestions. Like, vision is getting a little bit, you know, I'm over a certain age, OK? So the other day, I saw a friend of mine post something that she has to wear. She called it a contraption. So she had a picture of it right here because the doctor is monitoring her heart. And she said, she posted on Facebook, I have to wear this contraption for two weeks. I thought it said, I have to wear this contraception for two weeks. <laughs> like, really? Like, really? So then I, I texted her today, said, how's your contraception going? And I guess her memory isn't that good. She goes, huh? <laughs> you know, I had bad vision and I couldn't see that. I don't think I'll ever get plastic surgery, though, because I don't want to look like one of the real housewives of Beverly Hills. <laughs> Has anyone ever watched that? 
I actually watched it one or two times, maybe five. <laughs> one woman actually said, I'm really sad right now. <laughs> that really upsets me. I mean, everyone else looks natural here. You, you guys look good. <laughs> the lights are dim. No. Um, but I was talking to a friend of mine the other day, and she, she said she's got a lazy eye, and she said that her doctor suggested that she get that fixed. And then she said, well, but I'm worried that he's going to do too good of a job. So she said, well, what if, you know, he, then I walk around looking like this. I said, yeah, you know what, but you'd walk into a room look really, looking really excited to be there. And then we agreed going to a funeral probably wouldn't be a good idea. So sorry for your loss. <laughs> oh, something I want, some things I do wonder about if I should have fixed, but... When you're little, you really can't control being thrown in the dryer. <laughs> that, that's happened to all of you, right? Being thrown in the dryer by older siblings. It's a common occurrence. Oh, <laughs> there's no laughter. There's a little, oh, is she OK? <laughs> See, my, no, that's OK. I'm, I'm fine. I've, therapy is good. Billing my, my family, billing my sisters, they're fine. Um, I take credit cards as well. Um, <laughs> So what I had found was that my motto growing up was, oh, OK. But now it's, no, I don't think so. <laughs> One too many concussions for your enjoyment was enough. But I remember my, my sisters. I'm, I'm the youngest of six. I have an older brother, and then the rest of them you know, built in moms. Or I, and I was their play toy. You know, and they said, well, Julie, let's put you in the dryer and see what happens. And I said, OK. I mean, it seemed like a good idea, but I had my limits. You know, I've got my boundaries, but leave the door open. <laughs> so all they had to do was hold that button, the thump, the thump, the thump. And now I've taken it to the other extreme. I don't really extend much effort to keep the elevator door open. Oh, so sorry. <laughs> you know, going that with that theme was, no, I don't think so. It used to be, oh, OK. I'll get that for you. Oh, I'll take care of that for you. And oh, I'll be your, your dryer play toy, the thump, the thump. But I don't think so. I was at a party the other day, and there was a guy who was holding his toddler. And he, he wanted to bend down and get something, but my hands were full. I had my glass of wine. I was like, sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. You know. mm. One thing I, that also I do is. I try to find the funny, and that's why I call that my motto, my, my business as well, because life is too short to take too much too seriously. I can get serious just like the rest of them, but when I do find the funny in tough situations and seemingly stressful situations, it makes me feel better, it makes the people around me better. So I have to make a joke when I'm waiting in line to get my mammogram. <laughs> First, when I walk in to the hospital, go up to the escalator, and it seems like the breast center knows that I'm there. There's the, these huge doors. I walk up, and it says, the breast center. <laughs> the doors open wide, and with pride, I say, my name is Julie Ostro, and I'm here to get my boobs matched. <laughs> oh, yes, you're on time. Thank you so much. Proceed that way to put your robe on. So then, OK, doesn't stop there. Like, OK, I'm already having fun with this. I want to share the fun. So while I'm waiting in the waiting room with about eight or nine other women, I guess I don't have to say that. I could say people. You know, they're women. But anyway, eight or nine other women, we're wearing those hospital gowns. We're minding our own business. And I can't help but say, oh my gosh, we're all wearing the same outfit. <laughs> Everyone pretty much minds their own business after that. <laughs> Except one woman looks over her magazine and says, I know. <laughs> and we all have really horrible taste. <laughs> so what I also like to do when I'm getting the mammogram, I end up making it more pleasant and more comfortable for the radiologist, the mammographer. <laughs> Is that what, or stenographer? Does she write online? 
types on it. Yeah, that would be combine mammography with stenography. <laughs> but um, I find myself trying to make them feel comfortable. And okay, you can, I can handle the pain. I can handle it. I can handle it. This is my better side, you know. <laughs> and I try to make sure I smile, you know. That's what I try to do. But I also like, you know, there's that connection. When I just mentioned mammogram, every woman in this room, because they're over the age of 21, understand what that's like. No, it's not fun. But, but I, I'm glad that the men in the room probably support us and know that it's not, yeah, nice. Thank you, George. <laughs> and by the way, they're not this far apart. <laughs> but <they're laughs> take an anatomy class, go back to eighth grade. Wait, unless that's 85-year-olds. <laughs> Are you a soothsayer? Are you saying that's the prediction? Anyway, but I, I do realize that the, the connection, when we do say mammogram, there's that connection. Oh, mine's next month. Oh, how'd it go? Oh, I know, that's so painful. Do you want to go get lunch? But I also know that when we women meet, we make fast friends, right? I mean, I can go shopping for clothes, and then within five minutes, I know my sales clerk has a lover in St. Croix. She used to be a brunette. And then by the time I leave, she and I are on the same cycle. <laughs> yeah, seriously. And then you figure out, wait, who's the alpha here? Who's the alpha female? Some people, I don't know why they're close talkers. I don't know. But it makes me feel uncomfortable. So I was with someone the other, a couple people the other day, and we were in a kitchen, and I realized, I have nowhere to go. Like, I'm against the wall, and she was a close talker like this. And like, she was like, had her hands right into my face. I'm like, I don't know what she was saying. She's a very nice person, but her hands were right here, right in my face. Like, you know, we could do this. And I thought, you know what? If she had a piece of paper in her hand, she'd be making some really lovely origami. <laughs> but anyway, I had a friend who was a very quiet talker, and I can barely hear what you were saying. So it was always like this. I can't hear what you're saying. There was one day then a group of us had gone to the symphony out in the park. And I was talking quietly because it's a symphony. And then she said, I can't hear a word you're saying. Then another friend of hers said, now you know how the rest of us feel. <laughs> so I believe in speaking your mind. I believe in living your life with Laughter, gusto, and enthusiasm. And even if it means walking down the street, knowing that you have that toilet paper stuck to the bottom of your shoe, do it with gusto and enthusiasm. Thank you very much for listening tonight. Thank you.